that was by function. Let's now go and talk about supplier. So we talked about predicate, which was the simplest of the interfaces. It took a, took a type T and returned a Boolean. We then talked about function, which was a slight generalization of predicate that mapped some type T to some return value of type R instead of Boolean. We then talked about by function, which is basically a function that has a second parameter to it. Now we're going to kind of shift things and we'll talk about suppliers and consumers. And suppliers and consumers are a bit different from the other methods, another functional interfaces we've looked at so far. Supplier is a very interesting type functional interface because it returns a value and appears to take no parameters. Although we'll see in a minute, you can actually pass parameters through something called effectively final variables. As before, it's parameterized by type T, so it's a generic interface that's parameterized by a single reference type. Remember that it's only parameterized by a single reference type. And later when we come and talk about the other interfaces that could be useful where you, where you have to define your own custom functional interfaces, we'll see that we can overcome the limitation of having a single generic type here by having some arbitrary number of types, depending on what we need. It also has a single method, of course. It's abstract. The method is called get. And it appears at first glance not to take any parameters. And it returns a value of type T. So you can think of supplier as something that generates a result. So let's take a look at a fun example. And this will also give us a chance to talk about some other interesting features of Java 8 and beyond, something called optionals. So this particular example is going to have a map that maps string to string. And we're going to call this the, the being map. And it's a hash map. It's not a concurrent hash map this time. It's just a regular old hash map. And it's going to be used to associate beings with their most prevalent personality trait. So maybe a demon is naughty, maybe an angel is nice, and so on and so forth. We're then going to go ahead and get the name of a being from somewhere. It's going to read it from a file. We're going to prompt the user. We're going to get it over a network. Who knows? It doesn't matter. We have a being. And what we want to do now, as you'll see, is we want to look up that being to see what its disposition is. Well, if it's a being that's in the map, then we find out its disposition and we print it. But what if we get a being that's, that's not in the map? What if we get a hobbit, or a troll, or a wizard, or whatever, something we don't already know about? Well, we want that to not fail. We want to say we don't know what its disposition is. So let's see how we might do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take whatever being string that we got back up here, and we're going to look it up in the map. And that'll either return the disposition as a valid string, or if the being is unknown, it'll return a null. And to handle this in a clean and clever way, we're going to use a uh, class that came into Java 8 called an optional. And an optional is something that either will contain a value, its value will be present, or its value will be absent. But it's never null. It's very important to remember, an optional is never null. And that eliminates the need for null pointer checks. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to use a factory method on optional called of nullable. And of nullable, if passed a valid string, will create an optional with the value present. And if of nullable gets a null, it'll create an empty optional where there's no value associated with it. So we'll have an empty optional if this is null. Otherwise, we'll end up with an optional that keeps track of the disposition if it's not null. All right. So an optional is basically a container object, which is defined as part of Java 8, which may or may not contain a null value. But optional itself, an instance of optional, is never null. So you never have to worry about a null pointer exception when you use it properly. All right, so that was kind of a long-winded setup for the use of the supplier. We're going to see the use of the supplier here in a second. I was using this to also introduce the concept of optional. We'll see some optionals later in the class. So what we're going to do here is we're going to print out the disposition of the being, whatever the being was. And here's how it's going to work. We're going to say disposition dot or else get. And if disposition has a value, in other words, it's not empty, 
it'll return that value. So it'll say, if, if you say, what's the disposition of demon? It'll say, or else gut will say, oh, it's naughty. What's the disposition of angel? Oh, it's nice. If you have a disposition, or if you have a being that's, say, um, a wizard, we don't know what it's going to be. So, or else get, in that case, will use whatever supplier lambda you pass here as the result if the optional is empty. So if the optional is empty, it's going to take this parameter, which is a supplier, and use that as the result. OK, so let's see how this actually looks if you were to take a look at the optional implementation. So here's the implementation of or else get straight out of the Java 8 source code. As you can see here, it takes a supplier. And in this particular case, we're going to bind the string unknown, the string literal unknown, as the value of the supplier. And that way, if we come in here and we check to see if the value is null or not, if the value, in, in this case, it's the value of the optional. If the value of the optional is not null, we return the value. So that would be something like, you know, disposition of demon is naughty, disposition of angel is nice. But if the value of the optional is null, in other words, it was given a null value to begin with, we say other.get where other is a supplier, and dot get returns whatever the parameter passed to or else get was set to. In this case, it's unknown, the string unknown. So that's a very simple example of using suppliers. And it shows how to use optionals or how optionals are work. Let's look at a more interesting example of using uh, suppliers. So in this case, this is called See our demo, you can find this in the EX7 folder. And this illustrates some really cool things about suppliers. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to have something called zero param constructor ref, a bit of a long-winded method. And what that does is it takes a constructor reference for this class, see our demo colon colon new, and it makes a supplier object parameterized with see our demo, which is the name of the class, called factory. So this is an example of what's called a constructor reference. CR demo's default constructor, which takes no parameters, is CR demo colon colon new. That's the, that's the syntax for a constructor reference. So we are storing that into a supplier. And then if we want to create ourselves an instance of that supplier, we say factory.get, where factory is the supplier dot get will end up calling the constructor of CR demo and we will get back a CR demo object and then we can go ahead and run it. And when we call run, you can see it simply prints out the value of some string, which we would have had to have initialized somehow. So that's what we do for the run method for CR demo. So a very simple example, we get ourselves a supplier, which is a constructor reference. We call dot get, we make an instance of that object and we call run. All right, so far so good. Now let's take a look at something more interesting. We're going to define a nested class called CRDemoEx for extended, which extends CRDemo. So this is going to inherit the methods from CRDemo. And you can see that CRDemo implements runnable, so it has a run method. Here is the run method for CRDemoEx. This prints the string, but it uppercases it first. So it uppercases the string, unlike the previous version that just printed the string. So now let's take a look at zero param constructor ref ex, which shows how we can have a pair of factories implemented as suppliers to store these zero parameter constructor references. So down here we've got supplier CR demo, CR demo factory, supplier CR demo ex, CR demo factory ex. So we have CR demo colon colon new because it's a supplier for a CR demo. And down here we say CR demo ex colon colon new because this is going to be a supplier for CR Demo EX. So we've got two different factories that know how to make two different types of objects. And then down here, we're going to call a little helper method called run demo. The first one's going to pass in CR Demo Factory supplier. The second's going to pass in CR Demo Factory EX. And here's what run demo looks like. You can see it's going to take 
some generic type that extends runnable, see our demo, see our demo EX. And what it's going to do is it's going to take it in as a supplier, because that's what's being passed here, right? We're defining these suppliers. And then we're passing them as parameters. And here's the parameter. And what it's going to do is it's going to say factory dot get. So that'll make either a CR demo or a CR demo EX object, depending on what you pass to it, dot run. So this single piece of code can be parameterized with different suppliers that make different objects whose run methods do different things, if that all makes sense. So the last thing I'm going to talk about here, and I think we're going to go over the quiz, is uh, an example of how you can make custom function interfaces that can be defined using arbitrary constructors that have an arbitrary number of parameters, fixed but arbitrary. So here's the method that does this three param constructor ref. The first thing it does is it defines an instance of try factory. Try factory is an interface I defined. It's my own custom functional interface. And as you can see, it takes A, B, C as parameters and a return value of R. And it defines an of method that takes A, B, C as parameters and a return value of R. And then down here, I define myself a factory of type try factory with string, integer, long, and CR demo as the generic parameters. And I assign this the constructor reference for a custom constructor that I wrote that takes three parameters, which as you can see here are a string, an integer, and a long. And what this does is this is going to make the M string field equal S plus I plus L. So that's what that constructor does. And then, after I've made myself a new factory with the CR demo constructor with three parameters, I can say factory.of, because I have a single method called of up here. And then I can say the answer is as a string, comma 4, comma 2L. So 4 is an integer, 2L is a long. And that will go ahead and create the string with the right value and run it. So this is just illustrating that you're not limited for using constructor references to only zero parameter interfaces like, like supplier, but you can actually use it for anything that you need. So if you have constructors that take two parameters, you could have a, 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 duo, a dual factory or a, a bifactory or something like that. If you had four parameters, you could have a quad factory or whatever you wanted to call these things. Um, and you can define your own custom parameters. OK, so hopefully that helped you understand a bit more about some of the basic functional interfaces that come predefined. We still have a few more to cover, which we'll cover next time. We'll cover consumer, and then I'll talk about some other properties of those things. But I first want to go over the quiz and make sure we have enough time to do that.